with hands full of ink sold a manuscript for $20. She's running down the street, excited, so that the family's expenses will be a little easier. Her name is Jo and she was born into a family of six, with her mother taking care of them all by herself. Her three sisters had different personalities. The first daughter, Meg, is beautiful and wants to be in love. The second daughter, Jo, is independent and free-spirited and loves to write. Beth, the third daughter, is a good pianist and kind-hearted. Amy, the youngest, is a bright and cheerful girl with a passion for art. They have a noisy but warm home. Their father is away all the time in the army, and their mother takes care of everything at home. On Christmas Day, Mom found a poor mother living not far away and asked the girls to bring her breakfast. Without hesitation, the girls packed their food and went to help a family that was struggling even more than they were. But when they returned home, the table was covered with exquisite food. Their neighbor, Mr. Lawrence, a wealthy man, was so moved by the girls' kindness that he gave them a Christmas present as well. The rich man's grandson, Laurie, and Joe meet at a dance. Laurie tries to ask Joe to dance, but Joe refuses. Lori is attracted to Joe and takes her outside the house to dance, but Meg sprains her ankle and has to leave the dance early. Lori insists on taking both girls home safely in his carriage. As he leaves, he looks at Joe in the window. A smile spreads across Lori's face, and love begins to blossom in her heart. Lori soon became the best playmate of the four sisters, but his favorite was Joe. He invites Joe and Meg to the theater with his tutor John. John and Meg soon fall in love before Meg got married. Joe tried to persuade her not to get married, but Mac is happily married, and Lori, feeling the happy, confesses his love for Joe. Joe, who doesn't want to get married, rejects Lori and goes to the big city to become a governess and earn money by writing novels. Mac's life after marriage is as Joe expected. She's struggling every day and living in poverty. Meg buys a $50 piece of fabric after struggling, and she wants to cut new clothes for herself. She's also a little fed up with patience, but she regrets her complaints as soon as they're uttered. In the face of her hard-working husband, she felt that her behavior was too immature. Her husband loves her too, and John decides to give up his winter clothes so that Meg can make a new dress. But Meg sold the fabric instead. Though they don't have much, they have each other in their hearts. The third sister, Beth, is good at playing the piano, and the wealthy Lawrence family has an unused piano. Knowing Beth's musical talent, he allows her to come and play whenever she wants. As a token of her appreciation, Beth made a pair of slippers for Lawrence. In return, Lawrence sends the piano directly to Beth's house. When news came that Dad was seriously injured at the front, Mom was ready to leave to take care of him. Joe sells her hair to get enough money for her mom's ticket. But Beth contracted scarlet fever while caring for the poor. Joe stayed by her bedside day and night to help Beth get through it. Dad also recovered and returned home, and the family was finally reunited. However, years later, when Beth fell ill again, Joe left her job in New York and rushed home to take care of her sick sister. But this time, Beth couldn't survive, and she left them forever. And he believed that rich women didn't need to get married, but Mac is married to a poor man. Joe doesn't want to get married, and Beth is sickly, and he put her only hope in Amy. Amy was so influenced by her aunt that she set her sights on marrying a rich man. Her aunt took her to Europe to study art. Here she was brought up to be very elegant and engaged to a wealthy man. But then she is unexpectedly reunited with Lori. After being rejected by Joe, Lori stayed in Europe. After spending some time with Amy, he develops a crush on her. In the face of Lori's confession, Amy finally reveals her deepest feelings. Even though she runs away from Lori shyly, she rejects her fiancé's proposal and finally goes with Lori. Joe is depressed after Beth's death. She suddenly feels that her decision to reject Lori was a bit hasty. Joe writes a loving letter and puts it in a mailbox that only they know about. Lori returns shortly afterward, but by now Lori is engaged to Beth. Joe couldn't believe it, but she could only send her best wishes. Then she went to the secret mailbox and tore up the letter that only she knew about. She followed Beth's dying wish and started writing their story. She wrote every day and every night in her room. She filled the room with paper. She slept on the floor. And when she woke up, she continued to write on the floor and finally finished the first few chapters of the story. She sent the manuscript to the publishing house and the works that were not promising were chased by the boss's children and asked for follow-up. At the same time, a professor who adores her arrives her home from New York. Although he comes to say goodbye to Joe, he is actually testing Joe's feelings. After the professor says goodbye, 
The girls help Joe pack up and send her to the train station to catch up with him. In both the novel and the movie, Joe gives herself a happy ending. When her rich aunt dies, she leaves her mansion to Joe. Joe turns the mansion into a school and her novel, The Women, is published. The movie is adapted from Louisa May Alcott's full-length novel. And the main character, Joe, is based on herself. She shares Joe's quest for freedom. But in reality, she has chosen to remain unmarried for the rest of her life. The four girls in the story make different choices in their lives. But no matter what they choose, the most important thing is to be true to themselves and become truly independent women.